In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a view more and view less feature in Figma and how to apply that to a text paragraph, right? So here we have a sample text, lorem ipsum, and we are going to be creating a component that's going to be interactive, where it's going to be easy to then reuse that for multiple text paragraphs. So what I'm going to do right away is I'm just going to select this text object that I have right here and then press shift A to create an auto layout, right? So I have an auto layout called frame one that the text width is currently set to fixed, but I'm going to set that to fill container, which means that when I change the size of the container, the size of the text is going to change alongside with that, right? Then padding, of course, we're gonna use maybe 24, horizontal and vertical, so that basically these paddings here are a bit larger, right? Next up, I'm gonna create a fill. So I'm gonna click plus over here with this frame still selected. And you can see that I now have a background for that. Now, there are going to be two states. There are going to be two types of situations that we can have with such a component, with such an object. First of all, let me rename this to expand it, and then I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna rename that to collapsed, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do next is just take the height of this collapsed state and make it go like that. Alongside with that, actually, let me just select both of these and go to auto layout and then change the alignment to align top center. And additionally, what I'm going to do is select clip content on both of these, actually, okay? Now, I'm going to press T on my keyboard, click once and then just type in view more. Okay, I'm going to make this text blue, just some different color to make it clear that this is in fact a button. And then I'm gonna use the pen tool by pressing P and clicking once, holding shift, clicking float a second time, and then finishing this little arrow, which is gonna be blue as well. Let me sample the color from here and make it about three, two or three points. I think two is gonna be enough. Now, let me select both of these, Shift A, and rename that to button, okay? So now we have a button, perfect. It's set to hug, this is set to hug as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press Command X, select this, and then Command V to paste that inside of this auto layout. I'm gonna make it vertical, and this one's gonna be vertical as well, even though it has no effect. And then I'm gonna also align that to the left actually. So both are gonna to go to the left. Now, since this is actually expanded, let me change that to view less. And let me also rotate this little arrow 180 degrees to make sense basically, because you don't want to have a drop down when it's actually already being dropped down if that makes sense. Now, what I'm gonna do here is basically press Shift A again, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna press absolute position and expand all of this to the full width of this object. And I'm going to also press option S to align this to the bottom. I will be also adding 24 on the horizontal padding and same on the vertical padding. And I am going to be adding a bit more padding on the overall auto layout, right? On the bottom, right? If that makes sense. Like this, I think I could go for about 64, something like that. So essentially right now we have an object that's called frame one or button container that contains the button, that now is gonna expand to the full width to this object. But there is one extra thing we need to do. We have to set this to left and right and then bottom. In that way, 
When we resize this, we make sure the button container is scaled as well, even though it's not going to be a member of the auto layout. That's going to be a regular frame with the left and right constraints and then the bottom constraints. It's going to be the same in terms of width, 356. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste that here. I'm going to align that to the bottom by pressing Option S. And then what I'm going to do is just select this whole object and make it a bit taller, about like this. And what I'm going to do as well is add a fill, in this case, to this specific object. Okay. In terms of padding of this object, I'm going to reduce the top padding to about, let's say, 12. And additionally, I'm going to change the fill to a gradient. This gradient is going to be from white to white transparent, like this. And I'm going to reposition this gradient so that you get the usual show more type of situation that you see when using this type of interface, right? So we basically want to make, want to make a fade out on the text that ends right as the button begins. But right now we cannot even see it. So let me actually take a few steps back and increase the padding on the top side again to keep it 24 okay and then i'm just going to adjust this gradient so that we actually get some kind of a fade out okay and now you can see that when i resize this we get this little fade out and that's exactly what we need you can also notice how when I decide to change the sizes, the size of this object changes alongside with that. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. And yeah, so essentially what we're going to do now is, let's say that we want to have the first three rows fully visible, right, like this. And then the next row, the fourth one, we want to have kind of visible. So I adjusted the height of this collapsed object to show exactly that, right? So we can see that we have now a fixed width and a fixed height. But in this case, we have a fixed width, but a hug height. Now, this is very, very important. If this is not going to be hug, if you don't set this up to be hug on vertical resizing, then this is not going to work. Okay, so that's very, very important. Now, all that remains is select both of these, create a component, and then actually set up a prototype from that. Okay, so I'm going to select both of these and then go to this drop down on the top, components, create component, set. And this component is going to be called show height text, let's say. Okay, and then I'm going to select this first, first default state. I'm going to actually swap these. I'm just going to change places, right? And when you go to the, the component and go to properties, you can see that property one is collapsed or expanded. But in this case, the property one is going to be called state, right? So we have a state of either collapsed or expanded, which makes sense, you know. Now I'm going to select this button container thing, go to prototype, and then I'm going to connect this to the second state. Okay. And I'm going to say on click, change to state expanded, smart animate, and I'm going to make this 300, let's say, right? And then I'm going to, again, select the second state and connect again after selecting the button container, connect that to the first one. And we already have this preset to change to state collapsed, ease in and out, all right? Now, the thing is, you want to be able to change this easily the text meaning, right? I'm going to select both of these text objects, right? And I'm going to go to text and then create a text property. And this text property is going to be called text contents, right? Why are we doing this? We're doing this because when I use an instance of this component, and then I'm going to, you know, type something in here, like some nonsense, right? It's going to be updated. We need more nonsense. Brilliant. It's going to be updated both in the collapsed state and the expanded state automatically, 
right? I'm just gonna reset this, reset all changes, collapsed. And you can also see that we of course need to say view more instead of less. And we need to rotate this again so it makes sense. Right? We can see the component has been updated. Now, here's the test frame. We're gonna test our interaction. I'm going to make this a bit darker so you can actually see the white object on the gray background. I'm gonna drop it right here. Remember, this is an instance of this component. And after I placed this component right here and then setting the constraints to center and top, I will then launch the prototype. And when I launch the prototype, I have this component right here. And after clicking, you can see that it works as intended, which is great, right? We could also duplicate this. Let's duplicate this multiple times and make it say, make it an auto layout, right? Make it an auto layout and then duplicate it once more. And then when you do that, you get this beautiful behavior. You can see how uh, you can have multiple numbers of these components. Of course, you can then change the text easily. You can type in any type of nonsense you want any type of text and it's gonna be updated across both variants, right? Simple, but very useful. So hopefully this is gonna help you with your projects. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.